Joining me on the Neil Wilkins podcast today is Craig Cook. Now, Craig started and built and sold a digital marketing agency uh, with a computer and $1,300, would you believe? Um, He's just released his first book, uh, Business Kung Fu, and we're going to hear all about that. Uh, a lot of the thinking behind it and uh, the journey actually of, of releasing your first book, I think will also be very interesting to hear. Uh, it's a mindset book designed to help business owners and uh, professionals more generally uh, to overcome challenges on their journey. So we're going to talk about some of the issues that business people are facing today and how they can overcome some of those things with mindset and with mindfulness and other things as well, because Craig is actually a Qigong practitioner. Um, So there's a lot more going on in adopting a mindfulness mindset within business. So we're going to hear and explore many of these things and probably more as we go deep into this topic. So welcome to the podcast, Craig. Uh, Thank you, Neil. Thank you for having me here today. And I'm excited to share with you and your audience today. Yeah, and I'm very, very keen to go deep onto some of these topics because as soon as you said kind of, you know, what what you were um, into, what you do, kind of where you're based, all of these things, it kind of weaves together what feels like almost like the idyllic lifestyle. Is, is that how it feels to you? Have you kind of mastered this? Um, yeah, that's, that's a thank you. That's a very nice compliment. And uh, I would say... Yes, I I have very little to complain about, really nothing, <laughs> nothing at all, actually. And um, but there's always something to work on. And so I'm always trying to evolve and, and better myself in new and different ways. And, um, you know, we're all on a journey of, of self exploration and transformation and development. So, um, yeah, but it, it's it's great. It's great. Mm. So get, take us back a little bit, because, I, you know, I mentioned the agency uh, mm-hmm. that you must have learned through that experience from going from zero to, you know, uh, an exit on, you know, an agency is is a, is a hectic lifestyle anyway. It's very full on. Um, it's sometimes there's going to be peaks and troughs in terms of success. And what do they say? Feast and famine, I think, is the phrase, isn't it? So I'm sure in the early days you must have experienced that. What was that kind of overall journey like for you? Well, it was an extremely challenging journey. It's the most challenging thing I've ever done, especially the first five years. It was was really pretty brutal, actually. You know, as you mentioned earlier, I started uh, the company with a couple of friends and $1,300 and a computer. You know, we each put in $1,300 and I had a computer. This was uh, way back in the 20th century in 1996 (laughs) and uh, started a digital first company before that was ever a term. And we were marketing independent music online and we were allowing people to discover independent artists, which they would never otherwise discover because of the way music was promoted back then. Right. Only through radio and MTV. Um, So way back in 1996, we had a website where people could discover these independent artists, listen to song samples, buy their CDs online through a secure server. And it was uh, an idea ahead of its time because there was no broadband uh, connections. It was, uh, we started at 14.4 modems for people that know what that is. It's super slow, <laughs> ridiculously slow. And then went up to 28K and then woo, 56K. You know, we were like so excited uh, as that was happening and finally, you know, things sped up. But yeah, it was uh, it was quite a struggle because especially in the independent music market with an idea ahead of its time, there's only 30 million people worldwide online at the time. Also, it was just a really tough go trying to make money. And after a couple of years, uh, we adapted and changed our focus. Still marketed uh, the independent music, but started doing work for companies. But that first five years was incredibly challenging because it was very little money. It was, it was, it was quite the struggle. Mm. Yeah, and I guess that kind of builds a need or necessity to have the right kind of mindset because when things are kind of easy you you just you're just flowing you're just in the flow aren't you but it's when things get tough that it tests character it tests resilience it tests 
you know, that I guess that determination and passion to continue, because it would have been, I guess, in those early days, very easy to say no or very easy to go back to a day job and, you know, just revert back to a previous state. What kept you going? Yeah, that's that's a, a great question. What kept me going? And I just had this burning desire to succeed, to just make it work. There was no no other option, really. And it's interesting what you just said a minute ago, too, because a lot of us, we, we hear about flow state. I even talk about it in my book a bit. I, I refer to it as a flow state or a rhythm state. I like to call it. That was the name of my company, Rhythm. And, you know, all of us are trying to achieve that. And it's a, it is a great place to be when you're in flow. You're, you're usually um, really living your purpose. You're in a joyful experience. You're in the moment. There's you know no sense of time. It's, it's a great place to be. However, yes, if it was you know, that easy to begin with and if, if things were flowing so easily, yeah, what would have really happened? Uh, a, a number of things. One, uh, at that time, a number of companies that blew up really fast in the dot-com era ended up going bankrupt and within a couple of years when there was the, you know, the dot-com crash that, that followed. And, and there is something that you really appreciate and understand what you have once you've gone through that struggle. And, and it's, for me, my experience, it seems that in order to get to this natural flow in life, you really need to go through certain struggles and, and, and be tested and, and build resilience and perseverance and what have you. And then um, it's just, just the human experience. It's just the way it is. Um, and the, the things that are uncomfortable when we get in that uncomfortable zone is what really helps us grow as individuals. And then through that discomfort, uh, we come out the other side of that better. And it's, it's an interesting uh, path uh, that we all travel. Mm, it, it is, isn't it? And I think, you know, it's interesting that when, you know, I, I guess for, for you, it was you were kind of in control with your business partners. You were controlling the pace of things. You were, you know, riding a technological wave that was expanding. And so you were absolutely in the sweet spot, right place at right time. Um, and yet it was still big challenge because of the you know pressures of running it, growing it, scaling it, then ex um, exiting it. If, yes. if sort of people are in business kind of today, obviously it is slightly different where we've obviously, you know, a few years back, we've had the pandemic, which, you know, for lots of people have been probably one of the biggest challenges professionally that they'll have ever encountered. How do I keep my business afloat when actually there is no option to sell anything? And, you know, yeah. what can I do? Do I pivot, et cetera, et cetera. Now on the other side, we've got obviously you know, wars all around the world. And we've got, you know, a whole bunch of stuff going on in the economy sort of globally as well as, you know, peaks and troughs, depending on where you live. There's almost like an external pressure coming through now that probably requires a similar kind of resilience and understanding, isn't there? Do you, do you, do you see that kind of having similarities to, to what you were experiencing kind of almost as self-generated pressure? Yes. Um, yeah. Our, um, interesting world that we live in today with uh, all its um, events is that you mentioned, it really brings an interesting dynamic to the equation. Now, when in the early days, I mentioned the dot-com bubble and the crash, you know, that, that was a big deal. And there, there was pressures around that for sure. However, since you have part, if I back up a step, one of the challenges too, like as I mentioned, just starting the company with just $1,300, like we didn't have any funding. There was no big resources. We didn't know anybody. The industry was brand new. So that's why it was, it was a big struggle. And I started when I was 25. So, you know, I didn't know what I didn't know. And uh, there was all kinds of things that we could have done to expedite things, but you know, it, it, it turned out great. So, and that was all part of the, the journey and the lessons. Um, now, Going through that dot-com crash, uh, there was pressure, but it was we were really slow managed growth. So it wasn't like some of the big pressures if we had a big company and all of a sudden there was this big implosion, right? Um, there was pressure, but not quite the same. 
And then you fast forward to 2008, we had the, the Great Recession, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, that was that was big pressure. And we were bigger at that point. And we definitely felt big pressures then as well. Because um, the yeah, the, here in the States, the, it's like the whole economy was crumbling. And, and uh, we, we felt it. it. It took about a year or so, but then it finally caught up to us. And there was definitely some pressures there. Although we made some big moves at that time, too, that were really um, risky and paid off. And then you fast forward to the pandemic, um, just sold the company the year before, and, but I was still running the company as CEO. And that was quite something, you know, a lot of pressure. So there's been these moments in time that I've experienced uh, where there's these external factors that come into play, which do add uh, another layer of pressures to what you already have uh, in general in running a company. Mm. So... Let's let's go into the kind of what you do about it. I'm sure everybody listening to this thinks, well, yeah, I've got some pressures too. I've got some challenges and, you know, some of it's external. Some of it is of my own making. Some of it is maybe personal challenges as well. So it's this concoction, this mix of, you know, different things that mean that we have to be, I would challenge, we have to be quite mindful and quite kind of patient with ourselves, gentle with us, kind to ourselves, all of these things, because you know, I, I guess the flip side is we can start beating ourselves up and saying, oh, I'm not good enough or, oh, you know, I'm just, I'm going to fail or, or start kind of self-sabotaging the situation. From your side of things, we'll come to the book in uh, hopefully in just a minute, but if there is anything from the book you want to kind of bring out here at this point, please do. But mm -hmm. from your side of things, Craig, I mean, are there certain sort of practices and habits and things that you've seen kind of emerge for yourself that you would recommend others doing because you know none of us are none of us have solved this thing none of us have completely figured out how to do this so there's always little things or maybe major things that we can do to improve habits because a lot of this is based around creating habits isn't it that support us yeah, absolutely. Habits uh, and taking a, a disciplined mindset. And and there's a number of things that you touched on there. So yeah, habits is big. Having discipline is big. Uh, I talk about that in my book. But if we really focus on what is absolutely essential is the right mindset for going into business. And that's why I state that my book is essentially at its core is a mindset book you know, geared towards, you know, entrepreneurs and business professionals. And the, the mindset is really one that needs to be positive. It needs to have a sense of overcoming challenges because as an entrepreneur, you are going to be put to the test multiple times. Yeah, you'll be put to the test to your breaking point. And it's uh, having the right mindset is essential to overcome and be victorious on, on the other side. Uh, now, having the mindset, how, how does that happen, right? It's not like just turning on a, a light, you know, flipping a switch and suddenly, you know, everything's uh, rainbows and butterflies, right? <laughs> uh, there's a number of things. One, there's reading material. What, what, what do you read? What kind of media do you surround yourself with? You know, is it positive in nature? Right. Um, it's, 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 it's interesting how much power there is in the media outlets that we consume on a day to day basis, whether it's radio, TV, the internet, um, all these things have a vibrational frequency to them. Everything is energy frequency and vibration. And uh, you can have, say, whether it's high or low, positive or negative, you know, what, however you want to label it. But that's that's one thing, you know, just just making sure that you surround yourself with uh, more positive things of that nature that are going to inspire you, empower you, motivate you, uh, teach you something, um, just help you evolve on a right path, right? And then there's other things that you could do, such as uh, positive affirmations. And that's that's nothing new. I mean, plenty of people have heard about 
those, but but they work and it's good to you know switch them up from time to time. And there's all kinds of different formats for that. Uh, but that's that's super important. And then there's also this aspect of making sure that whatever your endeavor you're pursuing, that there is uh, joy, passion that you have for it, because that passion is going to help fuel discipline, which I talked about in my book with a, a five element model. Um, but this this mindset is super important. The people that you surround yourself with also. Yeah, there's a saying that you're the average of the five people that you hang out with, right? So what kind of people do you associate with? Are they negative? Are they positive? Are they moving forward in, um, on, a, on a good path in life, advancing and evolving and being productive? Or are they the opposite? Are they just kind of hanging out, wasting time, maybe getting into trouble, you know? Uh, and when I was younger, uh, I wasn't on the greatest path in life. And it's when I started studying Chinese Kung Fu, it, it was a, had a huge impact on me. And it, it really got me moving in a positive direction. My whole mindset just shifted uh, to really get on a path, uh, a positive path that would set the stage to have a wonderful life. Mm. I, I, I didn't count, but I know it was quite a few times you've used the word positive there. Yeah. That's it's it's interesting. Is is there a, a state where or a stage where you can reach too much positivity? Because I, I, I guess mm. the positive affirmations is is great, and as you say, you know, a lot of people would be probably already thinking of those or using those. Mm. Um, surrounding yourself with the right people, absolutely. But can you get to positivity overload where actually it becomes you're leading this almost sort of slightly deluded lifestyle where everything is butterflies and rainbows, as you you know perfectly put it there? Is, yeah. is, can, can it be too much? It can. Uh, that's when you get out of balance and there needs to be a reality. If, if, if you're of a certain positive mindset, again, that's a great place to be. But when you start getting to be delusional and ignoring facts that are in front of you, the challenges that are in front of you and ignoring them, maybe not addressing them, you know, just being too focused on thinking, think, 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 positive, think, 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 but without any action, that's when it gets out of balance and, and too much. And there's a, there's a bit of, of an aspect of that um, question that's similar to uh, the faith element in my uh, five elements of entrepreneurship model that I have in my book, where when you have too much faith and it's an excess of faith, it can actually kind of, kind of to lead to where there's this, just this lack of your um, action where you're just thinking positive, but, but in believing so much that things are going to happen, yeah, like the secret's a good example. A lot of people got enamored by the the secret, the book, the movie, and all that. And you know, all good stuff, right? But there's uh, some aspects of that where it's more than just thinking. It's more than just 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 mental. There's emotions that you need to bring into that equation, but also action. You have to take action. And if if there's just if you're all in the mind and there's no action, it's just not going to work out. Mm. So it feels like, is that an entry point then? So positivity being almost like one of these ingredients that you have to have in your meal. But so if we were putting ingredients in to make a recipe, so it would be something you have to have there to make this thing taste right. But it is just one ingredient and you put too much in, it's going to taste over positive, but yes. you put in just enough so that, okay, it's going to taste good. Now we can start to put in some of the other ingredients in the right order. What would those other things be? Yeah, that's, that's great. Well, I, I think this is a great segue to talk about my five elements of entrepreneurship. So what I identified are, are five elements of success in an entrepreneurial journey. Um, it's based on classic Chinese five element theory. And five element theory in the Chinese culture transcends uh, a number of areas where there's uh, martial arts, there's music, there's food, there's the medical um, system, uh, spiritual systems. It's really a, a philosophy of balance. 
and the, the five elements are fire, earth, uh, water, metal, and wood. And these five elements um, constitute everything. And we have our own five element constitution. And it's all about how those are in balance. And there can be excess and deficient conditions of any of those elements, especially with, um, you mentioned, uh, I, I study Qigong and there's um, the martial branch, there's the medical branch and the spiritual branch. And when you're talking about healing, it's uh, really about bringing those excess or deficient conditions into balance. When we're in balance and we have this uh, state of homeostasis, that's what the body wants. That's what we need. Um, so the five elements of entrepreneurship that I derived from five element theory starts with uh, passion. Passion leads to discipline. Discipline leads to expertise. Expertise leads to confidence. And then confidence leads to faith. And there's this generative cycle that you're building the potential, the capacity of each of these elements uh, as you go through, as one leads to the next. But then if you start to have the wrong mindset, you know, you start to fall to the negative and, and it just, you just kind of downward spiral, it reverses and those elements, uh, what you've built starts to diminish. And then there's also uh, relationships between each of the elements that can have positive or negative impacts depending upon the balance, the excess or the deficient conditions. It's all about being in balance. But those five elements of, from my personal experience that I experienced as an entrepreneur myself, and then also uh, observation of others, those are the five elements that I identified that lead to entrepreneurial success. Mm, I love the way you just described building the potential because it kind of reminds us all that this is this is a journey. This is not something like you say, you can't just turn the light on. It's only, hey, you know, I've got yeah. the mindset. Hey, I'm suddenly yeah. successful. It kind yeah. of, you're building the potential. It felt to me when you described that and you were using your hand there just as I was watching you do this in a circular kind mm -hmm. of pattern that by building the potential slowly and surely every revolution you go around, you're kind of cranking it up just slowly and steadily and it, just that there, there, there is an energy flow here just in the way that you've described that isn't there is it yes. is, am i getting am i reading that right 100 percent. yeah that's great you know it's kind of like an engine uh revs up right yeah yeah there's mm. an energy to it mm. and yeah. that feels that feels like it's again I don't want to keep using the, the cooking and the food analogy, but it just sort of makes sense to me with the kind of the flavor of the food, if you get the wrong ingredients in there, yeah. but maybe there's another kind it's of a great, it's, it's a great analogy because actually five element theory is in, in cooking and cuisine, Chinese cuisine also. <laughs> okay. So, so this spin off yeah. spins off everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. How, how would it play out in that? Uh, there's um, from my recollection, like uh, there's the spicy food, um, the more um, bitter, sweet, you know, there's all these uh, different constitutions and, and uh, there's also certain, um, like certain foods create heat conditions in the body or more cooling conditions in the body. Uh, like, like if I remember correctly, uh, spicy food, which I love spicy food, creates, uh, you know, a lot of heat in, in, in the body. And then it also could, um, uh, uh, affect uh, the liver because the liver is where um, uh, can get heat and then if it gets uh, out of balance excess conditions and you get negative emotions of anger rage uh, so forth um, from a Chinese medicine standpoint but uh, there's aspects of just if you just focus on cooking um, alone there's all those aspects of balancing but in the context of food I, I don't remember too much uh, about mm -hmm. that just a little, a little mm -hmm. bit but we can all get on and uh, and search that out if, if anybody's yeah. interested in, in doing mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm certainly going to look into that because that, that, yeah, there's just something that's hooking me in on that one, which is a really <laughs> great example. But I, I suppose, again, just coming back to the whole business element of this is that, you know, again, somebody listening to this thinking, yeah, I just feel out of balance. I, I know it is, but I don't really know where to begin with this. It is very easy to fall out of balance, isn't it? Because... You know, as, as we talked about just before, 
um, sort of coming on here. Um, I've got a, a quite, quite a number of podcasts that I'm recording today, which means I'm out of balance with maybe exercise. So I haven't been able to really get out of this chair very, very much today. And so I haven't been able to get on the bike and do the walk and this, that and the other. So in, in lots of ways, I'm out of balance. So when we talk about balance and kind of energy flow in this kind of this almost this ultimate positive mindset and state, are we talking about sort of equal measure all day, every day of each of these things? Is that kind of ultimately what we're trying to to kind of get to? I, I just want a sense of when my day is out of balance, it is because I've got excess in one area and I'm deficient in another. It's, is it that simple? Uh, yeah, see, it's, it is very simple, but us as humans like to complicate things and, and overthink and, and make things very sophisticated, you know, all, all good, but you can just break it down to its most simplest form. And yes, but what you just said is it's really about being in that state of balance now. However, you know, and this is where we talked about the positive mindset where you have to have that reality, this awareness that life has a funny way of challenging us and it knocks us out of balance. You know, things happen, you know, whether it's in your professional uh, life or in your personal life, things, uh, and the, the two are really intertwined in, in my opinion, but life has this funny way of sucker punching you, you know, in the face and then following up with a blow to the gut and knocking the wind out of you. <laughs> right. And so, what you need to do is is get back to balance so once you're you, you reach the state of balance like, like and you get knocked out of balance how quickly can you get back to balance and then how long can you maintain that balance um through life's challenges whether they're minor you know kind of medium or major you know life is constantly throwing things at us through our interactions with people places things situations environments right so yeah it's it's getting to balance maintaining it and then getting back to it when we're thrown out mm. so i'm interested in your take then on where positivity comes into play there because okay so i take that punch to the jaw i've then been winded by the punch to the body and so right i've been hit by a number of things here so i'm in the moment and okay what do i do right well, Craig says, I've got to get back to balance. Okay, so I'm going to be really super positive. I'm going to say, yeah, I can push on through this. Am I actually being quite neglectful doing that because I'm not actually recognizing, no, okay, this is a sign. This is a message. Something's actually happened to me. I have to deal with this. Do, do I need to kind of recognize it as a reality first or can I just push on through and, and balance or be positive and just almost forget it's not there? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I, I feel awareness is essential. Just having an awareness of whatever the situation is, you know, that's where 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 it starts. Our awareness, and then taking action. You know, as we mentioned earlier, uh, event happens. Okay, there's this negative aspect to it that's throwing me off balance. Okay, let me shift my mindset because you know I'm say I'm really on the path of, of being in balance and so forth. But shifting the mindset to being positive and then ignoring whatever the issue is is not the way to go. It needs to be addressed. Action needs to be taken, whether it's um, interpersonal relationships with um, the team at, at work. Right? Um, there could be some major client issue right when it can't be ignored or a vendor issue you know all these challenges and problems that we're presented with on a day-to-day -day basis especially in operating a company um they need to be addressed you can't just uh, uh let me just ignore it and i'll be positive and it'll take care of itself mm. <laughs> a small small chance of that happening mm. so you know that the action is essential and we can talk more about um when you're out of balance and things to do, you know, mindset's important, but it's, it's the mind is only one aspect of, of what needs to happen. Mm. So, so what you're describing then, if I'm hearing this right, then is 
a situation happens, there needs to be an awareness that this thing has happened. Okay, now you've got my attention because you just punched me. So you've, yes. you've given me the attention there. Thank you, yeah. universe, for that. Um, yeah. And it hurt because you did it before and I'm still bruised from the last time. <laughs> is often the case, I think. Yes, yeah. sort of talking metaphorically. Um, yes. So being punched, second, third time, whatever it is, the awareness comes in, okay, it's happened again or it's happened for the first time. Oh, this is new. Then there's almost then a choice then, isn't there, that it's like, okay, I know I need to react in some way. Is is the kind of business kung fu mastery, Craig Cook's kind of advice that, right, you've got to pause at this moment because I'm feeling that you can't just necessarily jump to the five stages and think, right, okay, just look at those, there's the answer and pick up the answer it feels like there has to be some moment for reflection does because once you're aware is the does the reflection then cut in and you think okay time out deep breath take a moment pause i'm using all the different options i can think yeah. of here yeah. before we then start to attend to it I, i'm just wondering if there is this little kind of moment in time energetically where that is useful because to me, I, I'm a great reflector. I, I, I really don't respond very quickly at all because I need that moment to yeah. go inward, see what's going on, actually figure out what's happened then. And then I can then respond. And the response then is generally quite good. If I'm forced to respond very quickly, it, it's, well, it's not chaos, but it's just it's not a very good level. Or it might have things missing and I wouldn't be that confident in it. So mm -hmm. is that a typical thing where the, that moment of reflection is needed before you can take action? Yeah, I can appreciate that um, when we tend to rush into things um, whenever you're in a rush and take actions in a, in a rush state, you know, more mistakes tend to happen, right? So, um, and everyone's different and operates in different ways, right? Um, but for myself, I'm similar that um, as you I like to take a moment to to go in and think, think things through and then take action after um, thinking things through. But I'll have a short story to share with you uh, in regards to this question. This is where that element of faith comes in. You know, when we're talking about when we're being thrown out of balance, but say we're really thrown out of balance and we're really being challenged and, and put to the test, um, the ultimate test where we're you know, at the point of quitting, right? That's where that this element of faith is so important. And when I talk about faith, it's a, a belief in yourself, an extreme conviction in yourself that you can overcome any challenge that is set forth in front of you. And then I advocate having faith in a higher power, you know, whatever your belief system is, structure, uh, there's power in that. And there's their team on the other side that loves you, guides you, and supports you. And I have a, a story to share. In, way back in like probably 1999 or so, 98, 99, you know, I was struggling with the companies the, the early years, you know, three years into it, say. And I was working late at night. It was probably 12 30 a.m., you know, past midnight. And my office was like super cold, like, it's just long story. I'll just say it was like cold. It was like in the 40 degrees and, uh, you know, bundled up and I'm tired. I've been, you know, at it, um, you know, since early morning and just working there by myself thinking, God, what am I doing? Cause a lot of my friends, people that I knew were in their careers, you know, working at some company and making good money and having fun and, you know, doing whatever. And here I was really, really struggling just to get by and having very little success, you know, just enough to scrape by. And, and I was really distraught. And, and I had this moment of God, what, what, what am I doing? I'm stupid. You know, all this negative self-talk started kicking in. And uh, it was just um, a moment where it, it didn't seem like the future was going to be bright at all. Like it was going nowhere. And I was just so much despair. And, but you know, I'd, I'd always had this, you know, strong conviction and faith and so forth, but I was being put to the test. Right. Interesting thing is that 
as I was really yeah, beating myself up and being despair, practically, you know, tear running down my eye. I was just so distraught. Uh, I decided, uh, let me check email real quick. Just felt compelled to check email real quick. And I received this email from a vendor of mine, a hosting company. And I read it and it wasn't anything um, business-wise. It was really more of a thank you from the owner of the company, letting all his clients know that he really appreciates them and what a struggle it was for him in his company and how he was extremely close to quitting uh, a number of times, but he fought through it. And eventually um, re- he was announcing that he sold the company actually. And, and he reached his level of success. And it was that message that I needed to hear um, at that very moment. Cause I was seconds away from quitting. And I was, I was ready to just say, that's it. I'm done. Uh, just seconds away from it. And when I read that message, um, it was divine timing, the way that came in, interestingly enough. And that's what happens when you have faith, actually. Things things like that, synchronicities occur. And it was the message I needed to hear at that moment that gave me hope for the future. So after that, I, I really went inward and reflected, thought about that. I went home and then came back the next day filled with hope for the future. Mm. Well done, because it would have been so easy not to listen or to just be in denial at that stage, wouldn't it? It was. Yeah, that yeah. was a key, key, well, pivotal moment, I guess, for you. You know, we wouldn't be having this conversation today had you taken that other choice, yeah. I guess, that life decision, because that was a big one, wasn't it? It was. It, really was. it was huge. <laughs> yeah, it was a pivotal, a pivotal moment. Yes. Mm. Yes. And, and I suppose it's one of those things that we never know what the the other choice would have then resulted in. It's those sliding doors moments, isn't right. it, with the, from the movie? But yeah, yeah. so was, I'm always fascinated by that because you think, actually, I'm really happy with where I am right now. So it was a good call, but we never really know. Yeah. But of course, that is also balanced because, you know, I, I'm certainly a great believer. You can call it serendipity or, or whatever, but that being in the right place at the right time is because you've created those choices previously to get you into that right kind of state and that right moment, isn't it? So, and, and it's from that point on then, was it that you kind of, Almost was that was that like an awakening where you just realized, you know, I have to listen to these things more. Were you a different person this side versus what you were before that? Yes, yeah, so I, was, I was definitely different um, in a number of ways. But I always did have a strong sense of, of faith. And uh, that continues to this day. And. Yeah, that's uh, th- there's a whole other there's a whole number of ways that um, I'm different, but I guess that faith element has been a, a a constant, and that's where it just has come in, in numerous times actually, because it wasn't just that one single time that I was tested. It was numerous times that I was put to the test, and that faith element is really what's uh, got me through and, and brought out that warrior spirit that. Mm. makes you want to overcome and, and face those challenges head on. I don't know if I actually answered your question or not, because I was I was thinking and going, thinking about the past and going within uh, quite a bit there. So did, it, did mm. I answer the question? You did. It was, it was the right answer. I'm okay. always a huge believer in this. It's like, it almost doesn't really matter what the question was. If I get an answer <laughs> like that, you know, and it, and, but that that's life, isn't it? I mean, it is very much about this, okay, we're all sat listening to this, driving to this, running to this, watching this, wherever we are consuming our conversation here. Um, and, and and we're all kind of taking our own little pieces of the ideas. We're going to obviously um, mm-hmm. share in a minute um, how people can get a copy of your book, Craig. Mm-hmm. And it's all about these ideas of, yeah, just kind of being aware and awake in those moments to Okay, just believing, having faith that you're going to be presented with stuff 
And those mm. stuff is going to give you a, a chance to take choices. And those choices yeah. are going to either empower you or they're going to take energy from you. So yeah. choose wisely or just give up the choice to your faith and just go with the intuition. Mm. How much does intuition play a part in this? Oh, that's wonderful. Intuition's a big deal. Um, the so it depends how deep we want to go with this. <laughs> but go deep. But, go on, Craig. Go deep. Okay. <laughs> All right. So intuition is a, is a really big deal. Um, I had a just kind of a, a natural gift of intuition uh, naturally that helped guide me along the way. Just uh, it, it provides this guidance to make decisions um, that are proper decisions that are going to keep you moving in the right direction, right, at the base level. But intuition, um, some people don't have that, say, sense of connectedness, um, but anyone can develop it. You know, it's just like we come into life with different abilities. Some people are very athletic. Some people are very musically inclined, uh, whatever it may be. Intuition is kind of kind of similar where some people have a strong sense of intuition and others don't. But any of us, all of us can develop our intuition uh, through various practices. And as you start to develop your intuition, it comes to um, become much more stronger part of your of your journey and how you interact with others and and, and make decisions uh, abs absolutely mm. so i think we're, we're talking here proper mindfulness aren't we i know you know at the start of the conversation you said you know it's more than just mindset it's mm. more than just positivity it's more than just a bunch of techniques it, it's everything the, the, what we're talking about here is holistic isn't it this is actually making time each of us making time to make the time to just be and be present and all of those amazing things that you'll be doing in your martial arts. Mm -hmm. But actually within those moments, just trusting and knowing that if I'm presented with a challenge or you get that punch, it's like, I've got the tools, I've got the support, I've got the, the faith, I've got the resources, I've got the space and time, should I choose to take it? And if I make that conscious choice to, yeah, I'm going to go with this, then we're awake and properly alive, aren't we? Do, do you find that a lot of people that you encounter, actually, there's either one piece missing or they're just not taking this seriously? Because if you do, there's an absolute bliss on the other side, isn't mm -hmm. there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's so many people out there that are on different um, paths and different points in their life. And some that have learned big lessons and some that have yet to learn those big lessons, right? So it makes life interesting as we interact with, with all types of people, especially mm -hmm. in a business context, whether they're clients or your team or vendors, uh, prospects, all, all these things that come into play. Um, when, it, when, when it comes to, let's just say, let's call it um, personal development that and the professional development are intertwined, I feel. And it's so important to um, make these choices, as, as you mentioned, to keep evolving yourself. And for me, one big thing that was essential in my career that was a game changer was when I started really uh, diving into the realm of uh, Qigong practice and learning the, the medical Qigong. I had exposure to Qigong through martial arts in the early days in a martial context. Um, I'm gonna learn some Qigong practices in that context. But in 2014, I was really um, out of balance, off-centered with myself. You know, just like as we're talking, I was that person that it, despite a great mindset and this martial arts background and, and discipline and all these things I talk about in the book. Um, in that moment, 2014, it was just enormous pressure. We were growing fast. Uh, we really finally hit a strong growing streak. Uh, we were on the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing private companies uh, five years in a row from like 2012 to 2017, something like that. So in 2014, we we're like right in the middle of that, of that growth spurt. 
So there's all this pressure, uh, stress, demands from uh, employees and clients and vendors and also juggling family life you know, all these different things. And I was just out of balance uh, with myself. And I came across this gentleman who practiced uh, medical Qigong. I was referred to him by a friend. I was like, wow, that's interesting. I wonder if he's the real deal. So I went and checked him out and um, had a session, energy work, and had a great experience. And, and I went back to him once a month for six months. And after that time, I felt so much more centered and, and balanced. And I was like, wow, this is, this is great. And he asked at that time, Hey, would you like to, um, do this work? Would you like to learn how to do it? I said, yeah, absolutely. So I really took a deep dive and started studying that. And it was a game changer for me in running my company, just in helping me maintain balance. And we can talk about aspects of that. Um, cause you know, again, despite everything that I knew and the mindset that a positive mindset that I had and all that training, you still, it's just another way of kind of getting put to the test. And then another thing in my life came in at a very synchronistic moment of time that was a game changer for me and helped me uh, keep moving ahead in bigger and better ways. Mm. It's, it's great, isn't it? I just think this is, it's not rocket science and yet it is rocket science because <laughs> I think for a lot of people, this is, we're talking a language here. I mean, you and I have, you know, used interchangeably a lot of these phrases and words as we've gone through this conversation. And, you know, just some people it's like, Oh yeah, you know, I get what they're saying. And okay, there's a bit of an order of play here. And I love the five, five sort of the, um, energies kind of thing and i'm going to get a copy of craig's book and this something and other people will be sat there thinking what are these guys talking about you know it's and yet all we're actually saying is just stop pause listen reflect take action is all we're, is actually all we're saying isn't it it really is that simple isn't it yeah it's it's um it's funny. It is simple. As I mentioned earlier, things are pretty simple. As, as humans, we like to make things more complicated than they need to be. And it is simple, but it's hard to be simple. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a challenge to be simple. We just naturally like to make things more difficult, you know, complicated. So if, um, but if you can take that moment to pause, as you mentioned, and, and simplify things uh, can can start moving in a, in a better flow for, for you. Just simplify, simplify. Mm -hmm. mm. But step by step, we want to guide people through how to get deeper into this. So I want to connect people with your book, Craig. How do they get a copy of your book? Because we can put this link into the uh, into the notes uh, below, the, into the description. How, how do they get um, to it? Sure. So Business Kung Fu. Uh, it is available on Amazon in paperback, hardcover, and Kindle format. Um, at some point here, I'll make it available in different formats and different channels. But at the moment, it's uh, Amazon. And uh, yeah, having the link to the Amazon page would be great. Thank you. And if people just search for Business Kung Fu, it's going to come up in you know whatever search engine that you use and take you right to Amazon too. And if you go to Amazon, just search Business Kung Fu and it'll pop up. It's a great title, by the way. It's so, oh, okay. I mean, I always think the beauty of simple marketing is it's so easy to remember. You know, nobody's going to forget. What was the name of that book again? It's like, it's so <laughs> obvious, isn't it, from what we've been talking? Yeah, thank you. So, thank uh, you very much. Yeah, simple. In that. Thank you. Simplicity. You know, so many things, like, like look at um, in the early days when there's so many search engines, like Yahoo and all these, they, they kept making things more complicated. They kept flooding the page, flooding the page with all this stuff. And yeah, the search engine, that was just this giant mess of words and pictures and just craziness. Then Google came along. Yeah. A search, uh, a little search bar with their logo. That was it. And then look what mm. happened, <laughs> right? Yeah. They, they didn't do too badly, did they? Yeah, no, no, no. They, they, you know, they it just, says everything, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And in working with clients, a lot of times, um, you know, building websites, it was like, oh, let's throw this on, let's throw this on, let's add this, add, 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 add. And um, it was challenging because it's like, no, no, let's let's remove, let's reduce, let's reduce, let's reduce, let's keep it simple. Um, so I'll just remove friction from that user experience. Uh, when we complicate things, we tend to create more friction. 
So we need to remove friction from our life experience, I think is what Craig is telling us here. Craig, yeah, this is this yeah. has been this has been so good. This has been such a great conversation. So many great ideas. I'm going to try and capture these actually in the uh, in the notes because I think there's a some lovely little checklist for those who are going to be waiting maybe 24 hours for the uh, the book to arrive from Amazon. So uh, just give people a few little tips and tricks to play with. So this has been such a great great conversation. Thank you so much for your time on this session, though, Craig. Oh, thank you, Neil. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me here today.